Where does one even begin when writing a personal statement? This is something that stumps many students across all disciplines. In this video, we'll be going over how you can create your own structural framework for writing an effective personal statement. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Teham and I'm a second year dental student at ASDO aiming to help make your dental school journey a success. Timestamps for the video are going to be right over here, so feel free to scroll along through any part of this video that you think is going to be most worthwhile to you. And as always, if you find anything of benefit, please be sure to leave a like down at the bottom and let me know what you think down in the comments. So the personal statement is what's looked at first by dental schools after your grades and DAT score. For the dental schools, this not only gives a glimpse into who you are as a current student, but how you'll be as a dental student and how you'll be as a dentist. So before we go into the structural framework of writing your own personal statement, let's go over what not to do in a personal statement. You definitely do not want to list accomplishments and things that you've done simply to list them. There should be a very strategic purpose for why you would be bringing up anything that you went through. Saying that you got A's in classes, that you were involved in your community, and that you shadowed doesn't necessarily have to be repeated in your personal statement. You have a very limited amount of character space for the personal statement. So reiterating things that you already said in your resume or the experiences section of your AdSAS application is actually a waste of space. You definitely want to reserve all the space that you can for things that aren't already mentioned in your application. The personal statement is not supposed to be a timeline of everything that you've done. So what is it that you're even supposed to say in a personal statement? I think the best way to get this point across is to look at an example. I shadowed at a dental clinic under Dr. So-and-so and I did so twice a week. I really enjoyed my time and I learned a lot. Okay, so that shows that you obviously were involved, but it doesn't really tell the person reading it what you learned, what you gained from it, and why you think it was a worthwhile experience for you. Analysis and reflection. You see that you talked about a certain amount of things and that all of them are just highlighting what you did and why you did it, then you're just listing things that are already in your resume. You want to make sure that everything you talk about has a purpose and what you learn from it. It needs to have analysis. So here's an example of how you can take what I just shared earlier to the next level. I had an opportunity to shadow Dr. So-and-so and I learned how dental providers may be the only healthcare providers patients may see in their lifetime. That is why it is essential for dental professionals to be up to date with patients' medical treatments, medications, medical history, and so much more. This enabled me to see dentistry from a new perspective and understand how interprofessionalism is a major factor to incorporate into daily practice. Now, if you compare both of those, the first sentence was essentially the same, saying what I did and how often I was doing it. Explaining what you gain from the experience is the most important thing because dental schools read hundreds and hundreds of dental school applications and you want to make sure you're getting to the point in explaining why what you did was worth your time. Okay, so this was a method that I utilized when I was writing my personal statement for dental school. The way you can start this is by go ahead and opening a blank document and bullet pointing everything you think that's worth mentioning in your personal statement. It could be any clinical experience, any non-clinical experience, any organizations you were involved in, anything you think that shaped you into the student you are today that can help you in dental school. After you have this bullet point list of your experiences, Go ahead and write five to 10 sentences for each of them. But we don't want five to 10 sentences of basic things that don't tell us anything that you learned from the experience. First one to two sentences should answer all of that. The rest of the sentences, you guessed it, should be analysis and reflection what you learned from it, what you gained from it, and why that experience was worthwhile. This is the number one thing that pre-dental applicants forget. After having read so many personal statements from pre-dental applicants, it's the number one thing that I always have to bring up. And it's something that actually is overlooked. When I wrote my first personal statement, I had no analysis, I had no reflection, and I thought it was perfect because I wrote it. Whenever we read things, we think it's just 
amazing and that there's nothing that can be improved on. And here's another example. I volunteered for two days at the Houston Dental School where I was able to work with dental providers and dental hygienists to provide care for uninsured patients free of charge. Now, what I did, how often I did it, and explaining what it was, was all in one sentence. And the remaining sentences are analysis and reflection. This was my first exposure to the field of dentistry, and it gave me a refreshing perspective beyond the dental chair. This was where I learned how to communicate with patients and how the flow of a dental visit transpired. I spoke with the hygienist at the end of the day, and she took note of my strong interest and motivated me to get a dental assisting license and I am forever indebted to her in jumpstarting my drive into this wonderful profession. This was a very pivotal moment for me in my pre-dental journey, and I treasure this experience of mine highly, and I always reflect back to it as a dental assistant. As you can see, just looking at these side by side, superficially, there's way more in terms of what it was that I gained from it, what I learned from it. I know I've been repeating this a lot, but it's something that repetitively is lacking in a lot of personal statements that pre-dental students read. So hopefully these tips can help out. Now, after that skeletal building process of writing those sentences for each of the bullet points, you'll start to have an idea which one of the experiences are really strong ones. And you honestly only need about three highlighted experiences that you think are worthwhile to mention because the amount of analysis and reflection that you'll have will really add up. Now the thesis statement is probably one of the most important parts of the paper because that's what gives the reader the impression of who you are and how most of your paper is going to end up. You definitely want to have a hook in your thesis statement and this is what I learned from many of my mentors when I was writing a personal statement. You want to create a sense of foreshadowing in your thesis statement. You want the reader to read more to know what it is that you're trying to say. You definitely want to leave some unanswered questions. So just to give an example, I'll read my thesis from my own personal statement that I applied with. It was what seemed to be a normal Friday night shift on the job, a patient was walking in with difficulty to her assigned room, with a nurse comforting her along the way. She screamed as she held her jaw to somehow alleviate her pain as the doctor and I made our way to the patient's room. In addition to my job as an ER scribe, I am a dental assistant at the Shifa Dental Clinic. I was excited to see what more we could do for this patient in a different field of healthcare. Little did our patient know that they would get to see me twice that week. Now whoever read the thesis statement of my paper probably had these questions going on in their mind. Why am I an ER scribe if I'm a pre-dental student? What's going on with this patient and how did I see them twice? But you can take your paper to the next level by tying everything you mentioned in your thesis statement in the conclusion. This tactic creates a sense of flow and continuity and actually creates a sense of completeness for the paper as a whole. If you want me to read my full personal statement, go ahead and let me know down in the comments and I'll definitely do that if there's enough interest for it. I hope this video was helpful for anyone that's about to apply or is about to reapply to dental schools. If you're about to reapply to dental school soon, go ahead and check out my Dear Dental School Reapplicant video where I go over the do's and don'ts regarding reapplying to dental school. We actually started a Facebook group here with pre-dental students where we get to answer a bunch of questions that you guys may have. We're actually doing a personal statement walkthrough on Zoom. We already have two students that scheduled with us and we have room for three more. We'll be going over all of y'all's personal statements and we'll be critiquing it and giving our advice in terms of what you can do to improve them. Go ahead and follow the link and join the Facebook group where we also have the link for the Zoom meeting where we'll be conducting this. If you guys are interested, please fill out the Google form that will be on the Facebook group so you guys can have first dibs and have an opportunity to have your personal statement critique. Get this part of your application done ahead of time so that you can focus on the DAT and maximize your time studying. Just an announcement, the One Mission DMD podcast is now officially on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. The first episode is live and we spoke with a pre-dental student answering her questions. We have a lot more podcast conversation videos in the works, so stay tuned here on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. If you guys stuck around till the end, thank you so much. Please consider subscribing to the channel for more weekly content like this. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.